Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Today on CityCast Boise. Fighting his way through this hazardous air quality, Boise Public Radio's George Prentice joins me to break down the biggest stories of the week. From the Kroger CEO testifying that he'll lower prices if the Albertsons merger goes through, to how wildfires are impacting schools, there's a lot to talk about. Plus, we have a surprisingly silent pick of the week. It's Friday, September 6th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. Thanks for joining me today, George. I I mean, I can barely see you through the smoke, but I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm anywhere. I'm right there with you. I've lived through a few lousy summers of bad air. Nothing like this, though. No, this absolutely takes the cake. I I was just talking with my husband about it. This is by far the worst I've ever seen it. It's so rough. And yeah, we could count all the wildfires, but it seems as if Here's that cliche of the perfect, or we should say the imperfect storm of everything that could go wrong is going wrong. Yeah. And the fact is, you know, yeah, people, there are some people who are compromised with lung disease, et cetera, but everyone is hurting. Everyone's hurting this year. Yeah, no, it's it's having some pretty major impacts that I haven't seen before, like for yeah. sports and recess and outdoor activities. It's really impacting everyone around the valley. And it's not convenience for kids. Recess in sports is important for their Mm -hmm. development. This is huge. I've been getting messages all week from the school saying, hey, we can't do outdoor recess. We can't do, you know, these different activities. And uh, like my youngest has ADHD. And so being able to go outside, being able to be active is so important for him to be able to do school and to be able to function and learn. And so it is, you know, it's there's so many different ways that this is impacting people, not to take away from the people who've had to evacuate. You know, Mm -hmm. there's there's obviously levels of it, but it's It's just so wild to see this playing out in all the different ways that it's affecting people. It's so interesting when climate change hits the big city, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, uh, wildfires are, oh, that's over there, right? Oh, that's that's a number of how many acres are burned or a percentage of what's containment. Well, here we are. This is all these dots connect. And it's so interesting, you know, six, nine months ago, how many people knew what an AQI was? Well, a few of us, <laughs> but almost all of us now have it right on our smartphone and we could say, oh my gosh, we are in orange or we are in purple or we are in red. Yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah. it's. I was going to say, that's like you said, if you'd asked me like three years ago about that, I, I would not be able to tell you what that was. And now it's daily. We're checking that daily. You know, yeah. my kids wake up and ask Alexa, hey, you know, what's the what's the air quality? What's like that is the reality now that as a child, I never asked about the air quality. I didn't even know to ask about it. And now that's what my kids ask every day. You didn't need to. But now I don't know about you, but I mean, it's pretty bad indoors. Yeah. Yep. I've got I've got some air filters going full full speed. And even then I'm I've got a headache. I've got kind of a sore throat like it. It's it's bad out there. It's bad inside, too. And there's a lot going on this weekend that I think might be compromised. We have art in the park this coming weekend. And I think that this might trigger a number of decisions. I know I've I've actually spoken to a number of people who have not been going to the weekend market. Uh, People are making decisions to say, no, I don't want to leave the home. Yeah, it's it's a real the air quality is a real fear. And it's it's something that, you know, I worry about for my children. I worry like we we aren't planning outdoor activities lately because I, you know, normally I'm like, oh, get on your bikes, go to the park, be outside like and now that's just not safe to do. And so we're trying to find indoor activities. And but that's, you know, it's it's such a it's such a 
a switch and it's it's just so I can tell it's hard for the kids. It's hard for parents. It's tricky for people at schools. You were mentioning that um, some schools are really having to change things up because of the air quality issues. Absolutely. You know, some districts are saying, no, we're not going to send the kids home because, you know, at least we know they're safe indoors. And I spoke to a superintendent the other day that said, George, we've actually turned off our air intakes. And I said, what, don't you have filters? He said, brand new filters, like top of the line filters. That's how bad it is. Wow. Yeah, Yeah. it is. It is so bad. And it, you know, yeah, there's the Wapiti fire, there's the Mm -hmm. Plex fire and the Plex fire. You know, we're recording this on Thursday morning and Wednesday night, there was all these reports about it's contained. It's it's fine. Um, And then first thing Thursday morning, the winds had shifted. They, you know, it knocked out power for people. It's grown to 350 acres. And so, you know, that's that's right in our backyard. It absolutely is. But again, they're all connected. Some of these fires are tens of thousands of acres that have been scorched. Um, Who knows what the fallout from wildlife in Idaho will be when the fire season is done? Lest we forget, there are a number of people who are elected to public office who deny climate change, who actually want it scraped from curriculum in in our public schools. These are important issues for us to remember long after wildfire season is gone. There are a number of people who think that this is an anomaly. Well, I mean, fire seasons they're becoming more regular. This is now part of our life. Yeah. And it's, and, and like you mentioned, the, the climate factor has all kinds of different implications where we're seeing these storms where we're getting lightning, but not rain. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the types of bursts and storms we've been getting are unusual. I, we didn't have these kind of bursts this often a decade ago when I lived here. And so even in that short amount of time, I can see how it's changing and all of this electrical activity with lightning and these storms that are blowing in really quickly is causing a huge uptick in the amount of fires we're getting. And you know who gets this? People under the age of 20. Um, And they will probably, if they're not already, thinking, well, why didn't you do anything about this? Yeah. We know there are major health ramifications for being out exposed to air that is hazardous, you know, quality, that is unhealthy quality over and over and over. And this is something neither you nor I grew up with, but no. our children are. And they're, right. they're, what, what kind of an effect is that going to have on them as young adults, as adults, as, you know, older adults? And here's a real kicker. September is usually one of the absolute best months of the year in Boise. It's mm-hmm. it's usually gorgeous and we do so much and there's so many activities. We have Boise Pride coming up next weekend. Well, as I mentioned, Art in the Park this weekend. Um, and it's going to, uh, I think people are going to think twice about going to football games and going outdoors, et cetera. Yeah. George, I, I have a question for you because I've been really curious. Um, so a trend I've been seeing is that the air quality in the morning is terrible. Every morning yeah. I get a message from the schools, hazardous, we're keeping kids in, no sports, you know, we'll, we'll monitor it. And then usually it improves a little bit by the afternoon. So I, I'm really curious. Do you, I don't know why that's happening. Do you know why that's happening? Well, I've been taught. <laughs> so uh, I have uh, the privilege of Uh, talking with the folks at the Weather Service every morning on the program. Mm -hmm. So basically what happens, and you have to imagine the Boise River as kind of a canyon, if you will, and fresh air will come down and search for that water, for that that cool water, and it will come down the river into the Boise Valley and therefore into the city and kind of wash things out, you know, and and Mm -hmm. we actually get a decent jump start, usually in the morning. But for instance... Lately, our mornings have been awful, and then the day gets worse. So this is totally flipped on its ear now. We don't even have a really good starting point. Yeah. Uh, And then, you know, when I go to work in the middle of the night, in the early morning, you know, things are usually okay. I'm here to tell you folks that are listening, at 2 and 3 in the morning, it's just as awful. Wow. Wow. So, so. Long term, when you're talking to these weather people, to these people who are watching these trends, what is 
what is a potential outcome of that? Or what is this going to look like for us in the coming weeks where we're not even getting reprieve in the morning? Right. Well, we are slaves to lightning. We are certainly slaves to the fire season. And I don't know when one fire season ends and another one begins anymore. Uh, But we do wait for major weather patterns out in the Pacific. And we can get real technical about El Nino versus La Nina. But quite frankly, we need a good wash. We need a really, really good wash. Not so much the wind, uh, but we need a fair amount of rain. Now, just as a, uh, I will uh, uh, tease you just a little bit. I have heard that we've got a major system coming next week and temperatures will drop by about 20 degrees. And before that, we've got a good size cold front that will push in. And if that pushes in, it will push a fair amount of this out. Keep your fingers and toes crossed for uh, about Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Okay. Usually I hate hearing that we're going to have a huge temperature drop off. I love me some warm weather, but this year, if it, if it stops the fires, if it helps with the fires, I welcome it. Hi, this is David, the CEO of CityCast. Do you ever find yourself holding back on travel because you're afraid of a language gap? Well, mind the gap no longer as long as you have Babbel. Babbel is the science-backed language learning app. Its 10 minutes lessons are quick and handcrafted to get you talking your new language in three weeks. So I was reminded in the Olympics how much I love French. I had spoken French as a kid, but it has deteriorated to nothing. But I thought I would love to take a trip back to France with my girlfriend, but I'm embarrassed because my French is at zero. And I thought, why don't I get on Babbel and and revive my French? And it's been a joy for the past few weeks. I had I'd forgotten everything. I'd forgotten plurals. I'd forgotten articles, vocabulary. Mostly, I'd just forgotten how to speak and how to listen. And Babbel has me back on track with lots of speaking and lots of listening, because that's how you get better at a language. So I've been working on time, for example. And there's this way in French where when you say 2.45, you don't say 2.45, you say 3 o'clock minus 15. So, je rentre à 3 heures moins le quart. I'm coming back at 2.45. Anyway, it's so much fun to speak. And don't take my word for it. There's studies from Yale, from Michigan State University, that prove that Babbel works. So, here's a special limited time deal for CityCast listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash citycast. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash citycast. Spelled B A W B E L dot com slash citycast. Rules and restrictions may apply. This episode is brought to you by Ring Cameras and Doorbells. A lot happens while you're away from home. That's why Ring makes it easy to check in from anywhere. Whether you're saying hi to an unexpected guest, making sure those packages are safe, or keeping your pets company while you're out grabbing groceries, it's all a few taps away, right from your phone. Be there with Ring. Explore cameras, doorbells, alarm kits, and more right now at ring.com. Okay, George, everyone that lives in the Treasure Valley is familiar with Albertsons. It's everywhere. Um, And this trial is getting wild. It is heating up. Have you seen what happened this week? I have. You know, it's it's pretty interesting. I don't think most people are really thrilled about following what goes on a and federal courtroom in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> but we are talking about what's in our grocery carts, right? Yeah. And we've all heard about what could happen if this mega merger happens between Albertsons and Kroger. And again, it would be the largest merger of any kind, something like $25 billion. Yeah. And bottom line, stores would go away. Albertsons, some of our favorite Albertsons here in the Boise area would no longer be Albertsons because part of the deal is they would actually spin off or sell off some of these stores. So yeah, we've got some skin in the game. But in this trial, in this hearing, this federal court hearing, and again, the FTC, federal regulators are trying to derail this. They don't want this merger to happen. They say consumers will lose. This week, uh, they've started bringing in the talk, uh, the top dogs. Mm-hmm. So the CEO of Kroger took the stand this week. His name is Rodney McMullen, and he got on the stand, and he said, oh, my gosh, this merger will be so great for consumers. 
And he basically said, quote, the day we merge is the day we will begin lowering prices. And he talked about not being able, currently not being able to to compete with the likes of Walmart and Amazon, et cetera. So he insists that uh, Albertsons and Kroger will both uh, lower their prices. But the feds are saying, are you kidding me? In our research, you guys, Kroger and Albertsons, are in tw- in 22 states. You're both there. And mm-hmm. by the way, you're so competitive with one another, we find that both your prices to be about the same. So basically, if that goes away, the competition goes away. So don't talk to us about lowering your prices and being competitive when, in fact, you're taking competition out of the mix. Yeah. Well, and even when there was competition, this is I'm getting this from CBS News. Even Mm -hmm. when there was competition since 2019, the price of eggs has risen 126 percent. A loaf of bread has risen 54 percent. A pound of chicken breast rose 33 percent. And wages have not kept up with that change. And so even with competition, prices have skyrocketed for groceries. And then we're supposed to believe that after they get the $25 billion deal, that then they're going to lower prices. My question for Mr. McMullen is how much is a dozen eggs? I know. Yes. <laughs> I'm really being curious. I mean, the expert witnesses are the consumers here. You would be an expert witness, yeah. right? Uh, to talk about, well, here's my reality. And, and this is what I've seen. Uh, so, you would think by what we've been hearing and what we've been reading that, oh my gosh, this deal is dead. But there's so much at stake here. And let's let's face it, these are these are powerful, powerful companies, uh, publicly held. Um, but uh, you know, the FTC is just saying, please, please don't do this. So play this out though. If this, let's say they are successful and they get a judge to stop this merger from happening. You know mm-hmm. what the next step is. They, they sue the federal government, and somehow this ends up in the Supreme Court. I yeah. fully expect this to go to the high court. Well, that's already that's already what Kroger has said that like they have ir- yeah. already filed a suit based on the Chevron Chevron deference decision from the Supreme Court this past year that the FTC shouldn't have regulation over this. It should be a decision for the courts. So that's already what. Kroger wants is they don't want regulation from the FTC. They want to be able to argue this in court. And that, you know, this is this this is the way that Supreme Court decisions can come home and affect the price of your groceries, affect if you're going to have a store near you. That's that's one of the issues that the FTC is arguing is that they Kroger and Albertsons have talked about how they're going to offload almost 580 stores and that that will leave a lot of communities and neighborhoods without choices, without access to groceries. I've seen that shortlist. My store is on that shortlist, and I don't want that to go away. I mean, together, they would control a really big slice of pie. But this quote on the stand this week, the day we merge is the day we begin lowering prices. My gosh, that sounds like something a presidential candidate would say. You are promising something. It's It's like, I don't believe that for a second. I know it's it's very much giving like don't trust your lying eyes like yeah. trust me bro trust like <laughs> it, no right. I, this isn't my first day on the block like <laughs> it's so interesting there are very very few stories where you know Wall Street and the analysts and CNBC they get all excited about a story like this but this is truly a consumer story every group of folks that I talk with, they're really into the story. They are following this very, very closely. So we've got, you know, people at the top of the economic spectrum all the way down to, you know, you and me. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah. hey, it's like, it's all about the price of eggs. I don't want my store to go away. And by the way, I like the fact that both stores are out there duking it out. Isn't that how we'd like to buy our gas? Isn't that how we choose our airlines? Isn't that why we choose brand A versus brand B? Isn't that our economic system at its best? That feels like when I talk to people, that's that's supposed to be the heart of capitalism. Yes, that competition yeah. is good, that we want more competition, that we want to foster competition to keep prices down. And sometimes in practice that works and sometimes it doesn't. But Getting rid of competition to enrich CEOs seems antithetical to that. See, kind of seems like, kind of seems like we're going to end up paying for that. 
Absolutely. And we need to remind the listeners that still to come in this hearing, we've got more top executives, including a number of Albertsons executives who are being accused of destroying evidence, basically, deleting text messages that had everything to do with this deal that mysteriously vanished. The FTC told Albertsons and Kroger two years ago when they first said this, and the first thing they will tell you is don't touch any files. Don't move them, don't certainly don't destroy them. And what happened? Text messages accidentally just evaporated and their excuse is, oh, they were auto-deleted. Well, the number of people whose text messages were deleted, those people are about to take the stand. So this is going to get really juicy. Well, and it's important to note that those text messages allegedly talked about how Albertson's executives acknowledge prices would absolutely go up. 100 percent. So it, I feel like we're, we're getting talking out of both sides of the mouth here where Kroger's playing like good cop, like, no, we're lower prices. And Albertsons are like, we're totally uh, raising prices. 100 percent. I don't think Kroger and Albertsons had a PR problem before this year. But boy, do they. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't heard too many positive things, certainly at a consumer level, said about either of these companies. And, you know, they, they up till now, have very loyal customers, but they they feel as if they're being kicked in the teeth. No, this was definitely an exercise in how to get everybody in America to hate you. <laughs> 101. I love it. Okay, George, it's now one of my favorite segments that I do all week. It's top picks. So uh, I'm going to jump right in. My pick of the week the thing I'm really excited about is Art in the Park. It is Art in the Park week, George. Love it. Um, I love it. It's at Julia Davis Park for anybody who's not familiar. It's the 6th through the 8th. Um, and it's open on Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and just a note that there will not be any public parking at Julia Davis Park because it's just it's such a full area. So um, make sure, you know, bike in or plan on walking, you know, it just, just plan on that. So you're not surprised. Um, but I am so excited. I, I love art in the park. I think it is one of my favorite festivals in Boise. Totally agree. It's such great people watching and you can actually barter. You can barter with an artist. I yeah. mean, it's a lot of fun. And I know I'd like, there's countless living rooms all around the area that are filled with pieces of art that have been so bought and sold at Art in the Park, and you will have access, let's face it, to some of the best artists in the region uh, with a lovely stroll through the park. So yes. suck it up, Boise. Let's keep our fingers crossed and uh, hope for a little uh, fresh air, just a little fresh air. Yes. By the way, a walk through the park with a lot of greenery. The greenery helps, right? The trees. It help. does. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. We're doing just the air exchange. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, either maybe, maybe a mass this year or like a, a speed yeah. run. I'm going to speed run through. I think it'll be an, an important year because it was last year when they did come back, but we had a spike in COVID last year. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite some time since we've had a full tilt art in the park with all the food trucks. And I've looked at the list of vendors this year. And by the way, can we acknowledge that the Boise Art Museum is superb? Superb yes. and brings in some of the top artists on the planet. And this is their main source of income. Art in the Park is what keeps the lights on at the Boise Art Museum. It's it, it's a part of our fabric. It's part of who we are. And it's lovely. And even if you just want to stroll in the park and do a little people watching, you've got to do it. Oh, it is a great time. I would say, George, if you thought I was a sucker at the farmer's market, you have not seen me at Art in the Park. I'm, <laughs> I, I like, <laughs> my poor husband. He's always like, how about just one? How about I'm like, I know, but look at all these artists and their amazing art. And yeah, no, it's maybe I need to redecorate my living room. I don't know. Art in the park will let me know. And it's so kid friendly. The kids tent oh, where, yeah. where it's hands on. It's it's just great stuff. Yeah, I love I have always loved how they encourage art for the children. Like, yeah. hey, yeah, come create, come draw. Like, I think that's so important for children. And it definitely makes it a very family friendly festival where some of them, you know, the kids get bored, the kids get hot, the kids are tired. And art in the park really is so great for family. So that's my pick of the week. I'm so excited. Okay, George, what is your pick of the week? 
Okay, so everybody's got a binge, right? So my binge yes. watch this summer has been the Olympics, and now even more so the Paralympics, which I mm -hmm. adore. I I know NBC is putting some of them in prime time, but I truly believe that they should take a chance and put this on all three hours of prime time during the two weeks of the Paralympics. I think the ratings would go through the roof. Anyway, I agree. Have you heard or have you seen a, a blind soccer? No. You need to, first of all, if you can go on Peacock or see it live, but you can find this on YouTube. It is blind soccer. Uh, you know, they call it blind football around the world, but it's, and they're, the players are 100% blind, no sight whatsoever. And the ball has a, a, a bell or a jingle in it, right? And mm -hmm. so, and it's amazing and how they're, they're totally passing and working the field totally blind and what and and they're playing it right at the foot of the Eiffel Tower where they had uh the volleyball during the regular Olympics so uh -huh. so the venue is gorgeous you have to find this online but here's this the crowd has to be completely silent so the announcer uh there says shh literally in the microphone and everyone goes silent so the players can hear the ball and then oh when someone scores or there's a timeout, the announcer literally says, noise, and everyone cheers, <laughs> and they go crazy. You've never seen anything like this. They call it blind football. It is blind soccer at the Paralympics. Uh, the U.S. does not have a team this year. Uh, it turns out that other countries are very good at this, but we are developing a team so that we will be a contender in 2028. But in the meantime, you have to see this. Has it been on prime time at all? It it has not been in prime time. It's been what? on Peacock. But if you go on Peacock, you can actually pick a sport and you can replay anything. But a lot of it now is is showing up on, on social media. I promise you, as soon as you see this, you will instantly share this with all of your friends and family. It's something, I, I'm just thinking about it and I get chills. It, and, and I can't wait to see it again. It's called Blind Football or Blind Soccer at the Paralympics. It is okay. a binge watch. I was going to say, I was intrigued when you brought this up, how this would work. I'm invested now. Like The crowd completely silent at the Olympics. They're just sitting there. At, they're literally just trying to like bite their tongues because it's so exciting, but they're being told to be quiet. I love it. Okay, that's what I'm going to be doing during my lunch break today. I'm going to be watching blind football at the yeah. Paralympics. That sounds incredible. It is. It really is. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with us, George. And thank you for coming on to talk about the fires and the Albertsons merger. It has been a wild week. It is. Now I need to go find my oxygen tank. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. The show is produced by Evelyn Avitia, Frankie Barnhill, and me, Lindsay Van Allen. Blake Hunter writes our Hey Boise newsletter, and our music is by Up Is The Down Is The. If you enjoyed our show today, leave us a review. It helps other people find us. We'll be back on Monday with another great local story. Catch you then.